welcome back to One Non Blonde. I'm your host, Kim, and today I've got Rocky Kramer. How are you doing today, Rocky? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing wonderful. So we were just talking before the show. Rocky's in LA and I'm here in Florida and it is the middle of August and we're both, we're both in the process of uh, melting with uh, 90 some degree weather. <laughs> yes. So what, do you, yeah, so what do you do to kind of beat the heat? Uh, I stay inside. <laughs> it's uh, did actually go get some ice cream yesterday. I haven't had any yet, but uh, get the, got some ice cream and uh, a lot of got a lot of iced water uh, to uh, keep me cool and uh, try to stay away from too much of the hot food. You know, just try to eat something that's more uh, more like a salad or something. You know. Okay, so I have to ask, what kind of ice cream did you get, and what's your favorite flavor? Uh, see, I have to ask these questions because these are like the fangirl questions. What can I say? <laughs> well. So I love ice cream. Oh, I'm sorry. I love ice cream, but uh, I love chocolate. So they are like, I think they're vanilla, but they're covered in chocolate. Mm. Uh, but they're the, uh, the, the, the cone ones that... Uh, oh, that the, the drums? The little yeah. Drum. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, my little grandson. I get these little teeny minis. Have you ever seen the minis yet? They yes. sell them in the store. So he loves those. He's three years old. So that's, he thinks that my, he thinks my freezer is an ice cream store. He's like... <laughs> They're on the shelf because I got one of those doubles so he can go right in and open it up and get his ice cream. <laughs> so he thinks it's an ice cream store. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So those are great. So yeah. So I was just I was listening to your music and I was listening to some of your covers. When you, I know you compose as well. So let's start with the covers and then we can go into composing. So when you're doing covers, what what is like some of the criteria that you want to when you're doing a when you're doing a cover and 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 you put your own spin on it so like i love that creativity that you put on the right. on the covers what gets you started on like when you you think a song and then you just go for it or how does that kind of manifest well the process of picking the song is it has a lot to do with what i feel like i can do with the song it's also important that it's a song that inspired me uh, either recently or way back when I first started out. It could be when I first started playing guitar. It could be last month. It doesn't really matter. But what's important is that it had some influence on me. So all the songs I've done are by artists that maybe it's not that particular song that inspired me the most, but that song is a song that I felt a connection with and I wanted to do something with it. It's, it usually starts out with me having just an idea of how I want to do the song differently. And it's not, uh, it's, it's, there's no disrespect to the original song. It, it's just that sometimes I hear other ideas that I want to add in to the song. So like I did Comfortably Numb, that was the first one I did. And I just wanted to hear the verse an octave higher. That was how it started. And uh, while I was just messing around with it, and I'm doing this all at home because I, you know, can't be in, really can't really be in the studio right now. So I was just messing around with different ideas. So I was I was doing a synth bass instead of a real bass, which is different than the original, and just kind of other ideas uh, that just comes up. And uh, it's uh, other times it's just maybe I just want to use synths instead of a guitar, or maybe I want to add a guitar solo. I make sure every cover has a guitar solo because I'm a guitar player. I want to make sure that people know that. <laughs> and you're an amazing guitar player. I, I, hey, thank there's you. nothing to me, this is like the, to me, the epitome of a, I mean, they're like great with a drum solo. Those things are wonderful and I love him, but a great rock guitar solo is just, it's mind blowing. I just love it. It's like, it speaks to you because you can almost, feel it you can almost see it you know it's like it's like colors it's just you know yeah. it just moves you <laughs> yeah that's right I mean I, I I think that's why I wanted to be a guitar player in the first place because it's just that there's a lot of uh it, the guitar is very unique and you can express yourself in a lot of different ways uh and it's just it sings it's uh you know it, it just has a wonderful sound to it I just always loved it <laughs> yeah and you and you do and you make them sing I, I just I was blown away. Like I said, I, I've, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a recent fan and uh, I am now going to be like promoting you, promoting you, sharing you with everybody because when you get somebody who's got your talent and like I said, and, and speaks to somebody, like I'm listening to your music. And like you said, there's a covers that I was listening to some of the stuff that you were doing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I still, I mean, again, 
you you pay homage to everybody that you're doing this but there's this like that you just add something that just makes it so you and i'm yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> well yeah and and the other thing is that it, it, it allows uh, the listener like like you for example when you're listening to the covers they kind of they're kind of they flow together more than if you listen to the originals because they would be all like very different so well, these kind of flow together. It's almost like an, it could be on, a, on an album together and it would be kind of, uh, you would feel like you're listening to uh, the same artist. Well, you would be, but, yeah. uh, but you're still hearing different um, aspects of, of that artist and, and you're hearing a lot of different ideas. So it's just, yeah. it's a fun, it's, it's fun. And it is, and, and your music is fun. And, and I loved your videos. You, you can see your personality. So <laughs> <laughs> that's something that's fun too. Cause I, I, I think yeah. that, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you meet somebody or you listen to somebody and it's like, you don't get to know them, but you know, just right. the few videos I watched, I'm like, I can tell, you know, your personality and, you know, and it, it was just, you're, you're fun, you're quirky, but you're very, you're very artistic. And I like that, you know, you can see that in you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I try to make them fun. Uh, and I think a part of that is because I, I tend to write a lot of serious music. So I want to bring in some fun like when we did the first music video um of, of my original music we wanted the video to be fun because the music is kind of serious so it's important to have a little balance you know you can't cry all the time you know <laughs> no and and so where do you like when you're when you're writing where does that come from like i know you're a young girl then you know me obviously but because i'm talking about grandsons but <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know i know that you know with the experiences in your life i mean where do you like do you do you sometimes like i don't know about you but sometimes i'll like i'll be walking down the street or something and i'll like see somebody and i'll like almost make up a story about them even though i don't know anything about them it, do you kind of like mm -hmm. get that like when you're walking or seeing something do you kind of like get that inspiration and start writing from that or are they all just all personal it's 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 a lot of personal but it is uh when you're when you say walking down the street it makes me think about uh, when I was a teenager, I would actually write a lot of music just from being outside or just riding my bicycle and uh, just going somewhere. And all of a sudden I just hear something in my head and I would have to, uh, it was just, it was inconvenient because I didn't have any way to write it down. So I just try to memorize it like, okay, what was it? An E to a, to a G. And uh, then when I get back home, I can write it down and, and, uh, and, uh, that's what became like all my first songs was just something that I came up with. It's just, me. I, I mean, it, it's not like, I, I don't want it to sound crazy, but it's like I'm hearing music in my head it's and not it's not like I'm physically hearing it. It's just like a mental radio. And uh, that's how I've written, a, maybe not all of my music, but a lot of my music was written that way. Uh, another thing that helps is just playing guitar. That brings out a lot. Uh, but also just, uh, like you said, like personal stuff, if something's going on, I like to write about stuff that's going on in my life, whether it's, it is an event or just maybe just something emotional and uh, just something going on inside of me. Uh, I like to write it down with music because I noticed that when I would write it down in the, in the form of music, all of a sudden I can play it back and it has like this healing effect. So it's, it's, if I was feeling down, I would write something while feeling down and it would actually make me feel good in a way. It was like a, like a antidepressant, you know, it was, it was it's kind of interesting how that worked, but it actually, it was very helpful for me growing up because, uh, you know, it's drug free and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just a natural way to make your body uh, respond to and, and maybe, you know, heal yourself and then deal with your own, uh, problems yes yeah you know because i think medicine uh, music is really med medicinal and like i said and the natural medicine i mean if you think yeah. back to like even in tribal times it was the medicine man and the music and they were drums and you know so music does yeah. play a very important part of our our human psyche and yes. you know with the covid i think a lot of people need to have this outlet and and so you know it's important that you use and luckily you know you're you have your mm -hmm. it looks like you have your studio behind you right so you're playing at home a little bit so luckily you're mm -hmm. able to play and, and produce these you know videos and help people to to cope because i know that a lot of people are so depressed 
and they need they True. need this outlet. It's it's uh, it's kind of sad. Uh, there's a lot of there's been a lot of suicides this year. I think a lot of it has to do with this situation we're in, and obviously yes, there's a lot of depression. And uh, I always think that entertainment is at least somewhat of a cure for depression. I think it's it's nice to be distracted. It's I think that the biggest problem we have is sometimes is we're thinking so much about our own uh, problems. It's it's nice to have something that is a good distraction, and uh, that that makes you think about something else. And uh, maybe think about other people's problems. Because sometimes when you think about other people's problems, you realize that maybe, maybe I don't have that much to complain about. And uh, uh, it, it, a lot of it is, uh, is, is perspective. So uh, it's just important to um, uh, just uh, look at you know, other, other people's lives. And uh, so I try, to, I try to be at least one of those options for you. You know, uh, uh, you don't have to choose me, but uh, at least I'm available and uh, I do write about depression. So if that is an, an issue for anyone that's, that's watching, it's, uh, I, I do recommend at least uh, giving it a listen because it might be, might be something that you can relate, uh, relate to. And, um, it, but uh, yeah, I, I just, I think that, yeah, entertainment is, is good uh, uh, during these times. Yeah, I think especially for young adults. I mean, and for everybody, but I think young adults especially. I just think that, um, you know, a lot of times it's like a taboo thing to talk about, you know, or, you know, I have feelings and they're not always always happy, happy feelings, but to be able to express them in, in the music right. and the song. And now I have a question for you. Now, when you play, or I know those right now we can't, you can't tour um, because, or play live so much because right. of the COVID, but have you had people come up to you and say, man, you changed my life. That song just, did something to, to help me to get through something. Have you ever had that or? I, so uh, since we live in a digital wor world, uh, most of those type of uh, messages have come from like social media. Mm -hmm. So I do get a lot of private messages from people saying that, you know, thank you for that song or uh, it, it helped me. And, and uh, that always means a lot because I'm not a, I'm not a huge artist. So it, it's nice to, to know that there are actually people out there that, that are hearing it that uh, I don't know about or that are just discovering it on their own and, and uh, relating with it because uh, that's kind of the beauty, the beauty of music and maybe entertainment in general is just people discovering it every day. And uh, it's not so much about, oh, we put an album out today or a song out today. Uh, it could be you know months later, it could be years later for that matter, but uh, my album is only a year old, so it, it, I don't have that much history with it, but um, we have been playing it for a while and uh, it, um, we're getting a lot of interesting feedback from it. So uh, that's always fun. Yeah, I think it's great because I think, you know, I was talking to Scott Page a couple of weeks ago, in fact, uh, you know, and we were talking about that, the digital age and the fact that an artist can reach an, an audience that they probably wouldn't even have gotten to, you know, 10, 20 years ago. So that's a good sure. thing. And I think that especially, like you said, it's, it's almost like an intimacy. Like when somebody's watching your YouTube video and maybe going through something that, like you said, they can yeah. private message you and say, you know, that touched my heart, that touched my soul. You know, that is like something you can't get always at a, you know, in a big venue. So I think in a way it's, sure. these are blessings, you know, to have these opportunities. Yeah. For sure, it's uh, it's it's a very different world, uh, and uh, it's nice most of the time. Obviously, people can also say the opposite things, but uh, I try to ignore that and I try to focus on the positive because uh, what I've learned is that no matter what you do, there's always going to be people that aren't going to like it, and they're going to, and you're going to find people that do like it, and eventually, you'll have that fan base, and and that's the fan base that you should probably worry about instead of trying to please the people that don't like it you know yeah and i think also you know with always people are always gonna have some kind of opinion about something or other but i think that it's really important that you have purpose and and i know you've been doing yes. this since you were five so yeah. you're playing music i mean it's it's part of who you are and you know i believe that people do have you know they're born with a purpose and and you are fulfilling that purpose to entertain mm -hmm. and to bring this music to people. And that's so, to me, 
that's why I'm your biggest fan right now. So I'm just going to tell you right now, because that's something important to me. When I, you know, I work with a lot of young adults and teenagers, and that's one of the first things I talk to them about is finding your passion, finding your passion, finding your purpose, and and just going for it. And and that's what you're doing. And I'm I'm in mm-hmm. awe of you. So thank you. Well, I, I think it's important to to do that because uh, it's I, I think it's better to you know get really uh, uh, take the opportunity and 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 work really hard and try to make it happen than sitting around. 20 years later, wondering if, oh, maybe I would have been a superstar or not. You know, it, it's, it's, I think it's better, f- uh, it's better for your, your, your mind to, to actually see what it's really like and, and figure out how much work it really is and, and uh, actually getting real responses because, you know, what your family says or what your friends say is not necessarily uh, I mean, I'm not saying it's not the truth, but I'm just saying like sometimes people are nice to you because they know you, they know what you've been through. It's it's a very different opinion when you talk to someone who don't have a reason to be nice to you. And they say, you know what, that was amazing or whatever they say. Uh, it, it's like, um, I'm not saying that that's more important, but it is important to have, to get different types of feedback so that you know that you're doing the right thing. I agree because I have five kids. They're they're all in the, wow. know, the same. They're all probably in the same age group in you that you are. So, but anyways, mm-hmm. but I'll say something to them like, "Oh, you you're doing great. You're gonna you know you're gonna be you know this." That was a mom. You're you have to tell us this because <laughs> you know yeah. you're obligated. I'm like, no, I would tell you, but I do think when somebody else validates them, it does mean something a little bit more. Not more, but. It's almost like you said, it's like I've, I've gone it, yeah. out of my comfort zone and I'm moving into like a new place and this is my purpose and this is where I need to be. So, you know, with your videos and your YouTube channel and everything, I, you know, you're, mm-hmm. you definitely have gotten more than just like your little fan base of your family saying, yes, you're great. You are doing amazing work and I can only see more coming your way because you are very talented. Well, you know, I've, this is only the beginning. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I want to be like, I want to get on that train and go with you because you're doing great, you know? So the Rocky train, the Rocky train. <laughs> woo-hoo, we're going to go. So, <laughs> <woo-hoo>. <laughs> so, you know, it's important. It's important that we have a good time and we, and we, you know, enjoy life. Yes. And I really, I, you know, I, I admire, I, there's one of those things where like, I love, 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 love music. It's like one of my favorite things in the world. I can mm-hmm. sing. I'm not saying I'm a amazing, but I sing, you know, pretty good. I, I, I'm decent. I can hold a tune. Mm-hmm. Never has been able to play an instrument. I have tried oh. and tried and tried. I just don't, I don't know if it's just the hand-eye coordination. I can dance. I can sing. There you go. But I just That's... can't do the music, the instrument part. I, I tried. I really did, you know, but so I always admire people who can play any kind of instrument, but you play numerous instruments. So that's even more impressive to me. So I, I, I you know, hats off to you because like I said, I, I've tried, I've, I've pulled the keyboards out. I've pulled the organ. I've tried the guitar. I'm, you know, uh-huh. I just, yeah, it just didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work, huh? It didn't work. Hmm. No, but I can, like I said, I can carry a tune. I can sing. I sing every Sunday at church. I sing in a church mm-hmm. choir. I do things like that, but nope, no, no, no instrument. Well, one of these days. <laughs> yeah, I keep trying. You know, and that's exactly it. You know, because I always look at it like this is like one of the things that's going on in my life right now is I really feel like it's never too late to try something new. So maybe I'll try. Maybe I can get you to teach me. You know, when all this COVID's over, go. I can you can come over and I <laughs> give me a free guitar lesson or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You'll probably go put it down. <laughs> yeah. Walk away. Don't, don't play it. Don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> you just. You just admire from a distance. <laughs> yes. Well, there, 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 there's one thing that I've, 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 I think I've learned or, or paid attention to now with the COVID thing is that it's important that uh, now that a lot of people have more time than they normally have, it's important that if you want to spend that time doing something, it is a good time to do that thing you've been thinking about doing. Uh, you don't have to necessarily do something just because you have time. But if it is something you've always wanted to do, then you should definitely give it a shot. You know, I mean, this, this is the perfect time to do it. 
Yeah, that's why I'm yep. podcasting. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I really, what I really want to do is, um, I was talking to Eileen about it. I really want to start like a little variety show, you know? So uh-huh. like, with, like I call this a podcast, but it's really more of a webcast because why I do the video. And I'd, I'd like to eventually get to the point where it's like, you can come on and just sing a song, and you know, part yeah. of my show, kind of like a entertainment thing. And mm-hmm. uh, just offer it to people to, as an alternative because, you know, we have the same old stale things going on all the time. So there's something fresh and different and, you know, different perspective. So that's my mm-hmm. goals. So, and then, you know, eventually when I, I'm, I'm working on that and when I make my variety hour, I, you're definitely gonna be one of my first guests to sing. All right. <laughs> Now, if you want to sing right now, you're welcome to do that too, but I, I didn't put, I put you on the spot now. <laughs> but <laughs> I actually did that to a, a guest, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I actually kind of pre-warned him ahead of time. I said, so he, we did a duet on a song, you know, just because it was just something fun. Cause he was, he's actually, he st- he's uh, practicing. He never did a musical and he was practicing to be on Broadway. I said, okay, well, I- mm-hmm. I'll, I'll make you play, you know, sing something, you know, right here on the show. So acapella, he sang, and I kind of duetted with him a little bit, but it was more him. But it was fun, you know. So you know, just trying to get, trying to spice it up a little bit, you know. Yeah, you gotta do it. <laughs> so what's new and exciting going on in California with you? I mean, I know you got the album; it's been out about a year. You can't tour until yeah. maybe next year. Are you starting to write again, or are you making more videos? What's going on? Um, like in the immediate future it's uh i'm just gonna stick to the covers and because uh, i basically have a routine of i'll, I'll make the cover you know, the audio part and then i'll make a video of it because i think that video is important i think having something to look at sometimes uh helps the song i think maybe that's just because i grew up with mtv or i grew up at the very end of mtv still playing music videos i know what happened i loved and- mv mtv it was like i was the mtv generation yeah i remember when it, it launched it, it fell That's apart i am <laughs> i mean it, it's uh, well it, it became about reality shows and i i i think that if you're if the name of your channel is music television why not have some music on it oh i agree <laughs> so, no i agree i mean oh my gosh i thought you know like when we first start i mean i remember this is how old i am i remember in 1984 when van halen that was the big thing Van Halen was going to debut at midnight jump. And oh, all my friends, we, all, we were like hanging out, having a party, and we all had to make sure that we turned on MTV to watch the debut of jump. That was like, it was an event. When I was a teenager, watching MTV yeah. videos, especially when you knew a world premiere was coming on, it was an event. Now, So it's like, had you heard the song before that? No. It was so like this is all the first the- time you're hearing the song, you're seeing the video, yeah, yeah. and you're all excited. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh I, yeah. That, I miss that. Yeah, it was like really exciting because like you know, and it made a lot of people like, and that's what I love about your videos because I think your videos are great. It made a lot of people who probably wouldn't have been so famous famous, and then it also kind of forced if you watch like old MTV videos, it kind mm-hmm. of forced some of the staples you know like people who already were kind of popular in the in the radio world to right. do videos and you could see sometimes like they were really uncomfortable because it wasn't their genre that wasn't their niche and yeah. some of them kind of fell away because of it and then others actually you know embraced it and they were like bands from the 60s and 70s who actually had a resurgence because they use, like you said, humor and a lot of great graphics and things like that to make people mm-hmm. go, ooh, that sounds cool. I'll have to look at that. And then they started buying more of their stuff, you know, their older stuff. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just, uh, I think music videos are really great to develop fans. It's mm-hmm. just uh, being able to see the artist is, is and, and that's not necessarily like, you know, like you don't have to be necessarily, you know, very attractive or anything, but it's just a matter of having an idea of, of who's behind the, the microphone or who's in front of the microphone uh, or who's playing that guitar. Like, who are these people? Because you don't know when you're listening to the radio, like, who are these people? And uh, I just, I like having a face to look at, I guess, when, when I'm, just to know who the artist is. And uh, uh, maybe that's just because I like live performances. I like concerts. And I just, the, the, the nice thing about going to a concert, which is not, 
so much of a thing right now yeah. um is that you can actually see the artist perform and that's something that's really nice and the benefit of a music video is that you can actually do something more creative and 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 make almost like a short film like Michael Jackson did and it makes something that's very cool to to watch and something you want to watch over and over again and something that's choreographed and and rehearsed and then you know everybody's at their best and and it's just it's it's something special and I like that I like doing something that's special because that's different than our mentality today with social media where everything is like well you got to post 10 things a day and everything is some like bad photo of you where you woke up hungover and I'm just kidding, but uh, I would never do that. Like, I just never liked, uh, I was never into the quantity of things. I'd rather have, you know, something that is uh, like a music video to me is better than a, a hundred posts on, on, on Instagram. You know, it just doesn't, uh, I can't relate to the whole TikTok and all the, all the current uh, way of, of, of uh, I guess sharing entertainment because everything is short and and crappy. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, I agree. I, like, I agree. Yeah, I want something that's that's good, something that's well made. You know, good production and and uh, we can actually do a lot. Like I make these videos at home. I mean, it's basically it's a green screen and a camera and and just trying to be creative and uh, some obviously a lot of editing and so on. But uh, I'd rather put the effort into that than making a lot of silly stuff that you know gets a little bit of attention for a little bit and then goes away forever no i agree you you definitely and you reminded me that's why i said that's why i had my hair off like the 80s see oh yeah um yeah and the earrings <laughs> the hair i was like i have to get all like already like this is how i used to like you know when you know <laughs> when i was a teenager because i love the stuff that you were doing because it's like a lot of the stuff was from the 80s that i was listening to today yeah and you really captured the fun essence that innocence and i think you're very timely because if you notice a lot of people especially with this covid they're like reminiscing about the 80s it was like a, you know a time when it was like you know it was fun still because like music was fun and you know yeah. we take things too seriously and you know whereas the 90s had a little more grunge going on and well, not that it's a bad thing because i love the grunge too but you know in the 80s it was like you know we're just gonna have fun hair and you know the videos were fun and, and so i just you captured that essence and i just love it i just do it was just made me think about you know my fun times in, as a high school student so thank you <laughs> yeah well uh i i love the 80s you know and that's that's uh it was important to me uh, really from the beginning that I wanted to embrace the 80s with both my music and with, you know, covers. So a lot of my covers are kind of 80s inspired just because that's what I love and I enjoy the sounds and the visuals of the 80s. Um, you know, I when you talk about a grunge, I, I, I have like a very mixed, uh, I have very mixed emotions about grunge. And on one hand, I liked some aspects of it. I like, I like, if Nirvana is considered grunge, I don't know, but I guess yeah. it is. Um, I like Nirvana and I liked some of the other bands, but I felt that they were really trying to not be the 80s. And in many ways, when you're just trying to be the opposite by just by, you know, you don't just flip the cards, you know, you, you gotta it, come up with something new instead of just doing the opposite. And uh, I think they lost the, like rock and roll just kind of lost its identity and uh since then i feel like there's been a lot of it has been come has come back as either some sort of throwback to either the beatles or 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 i guess sometimes the 80s or or you know whatever fe people feel like but it's sort of music kind of lost its identity maybe in general like after the 80s when the 80s ended which to me the 80s ended more like 92 yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no I early agree. 90s yeah i agree and it was like it was just interesting because like i said and i i used to love mtv and then then they decided to give us vh1 which was it was it was good but it, again it was just like it wasn't the same but i think that you know what i i so i've listened to some of your songs obviously I, I love the fact that you did the show Must Go On by Queen. Queen is like one of my favorite bands of all time. Yeah, did you I get a chance Queen. to see, did you get a chance to see the Bohemian Rhapsody movie? 
I did see the movie Arrested movie, yes. Wasn't it a it. great, I mean, I remember we, because I have a very large family, like I already told you. So most of us ended up going to the movies when it was in the theater and we basically took up a whole row. And uh-huh. <laughs> so awesome. we were all, we were all, <laughs> because it's like, see the wrong, because my kids were like, they're all 80s people too. You know, I raised them to mm-hmm. like love all that stuff. And so they're always into that. My, my, um, my daughter, she loves to list, you know, she loves watching like all those, you know, movies from the eighties too, like, you know, Pretty in Pink and all, you know, like um, Breakfast Club and, you know, 16 mm-hmm. Candles, all that. I mean, it's like the whole eighties was just like a fun, you know, fun vibe for them. So they'll just go back and watch a lot of those old movies and stuff like that because they just love that kind of, you know, vibe. Yeah, I, I do too. I, I love, to me, it's like anything that's eighties, whether it's music or movies, or uh, maybe even, uh, I guess, fashion and so, uh, some of the hairstyles. There were some, some of the bands were getting a little crazy, but uh, I just think that uh, it was a fun decade in terms of entertainment. And uh, we haven't really done anything like that since. It's just everything after that is kind of, I guess, people trying to like modernize and, and trying to be more subtle. The 80s was just like everything everything goes and everything is kind of fun and maybe some people think it's it's a little too crazy but i just uh, thought it was fun and i enjoyed all of that stuff i mean i wasn't alive to experience it myself but i just look looking at it from someone that was born after that uh just i don't know i just i feel like i wish i could have experienced it all myself if i, if I could uh, you, if there was a time machine and I could just go to 1980, I would do it. I would live that whole era <laughs> every no. day, go to as yeah. many concerts as possible. Yeah, it was a really fun time. It's like, I remember like, you know, we would be like talking about like what the guys were wearing, you know, like David Lee Roth, what is he wearing? What is he doing? You know, it's like right. everything was like, everything was like an event. And like I said, the videos were events, the music was events, you know, the latest hairstyles. I mean, it was funny because, um, you know, I work, like I said, I work with, with high school students as well as young adults. And mm-hmm. when I worked in a high school, whenever they did 80s day, of course, I would always dress up too, because, you know, it was just the cool thing to do. Yeah. And and the, te- the teacher's like, I'm like, yeah, I saw some of the stuff in my closet. But it was like fun, you know? And it's like, you know, you just, it was just fun stuff. It was just, you know, just the bright colors and, you know, yeah. big hair. And, you know, it was just, like bright lipstick and I'll never forget because like you know you're talking about the generation before was very like uptight you know very uptight on a lot of things not this not the hippies but the people were coming in between that you know right and yeah. um I remember when I was my first job and, and I was 16 years old and I was working at a steakhouse and I went ahead mm-hmm. and I had the green eyeshadow I mean I didn't I wasn't completely gaudy but I had green eyeshadow and blue dark blue i had dark blue um nails and my mm-hmm. and i got in so much trouble because I, I was like i was working this and and like, her look at her nails they're not that's not a color that's not right that's i i actually got in a lot of trouble with my boss he's like oh no yeah i was like that was not even nothing you know it was completely that was nothing compared to what other people were doing but it was just like yeah. but you know it, it's just it was very it was funny to see how you know things progress and now i love 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 that's one thing i do love i do love the uh-huh. fact that people can express express themselves especially younger people can express themselves and yeah there's still people who are going to make a face or two but for the most part i think people understand that it's okay to express yourself and that you don't have to fall in any kind of niche Right. I, I, I think that's, that's true. That's very true for, for today's society. I think we are kind of allowed to be ourselves now, finally, right? <laughs> it was like, especially watching, like wa- watching really movies from any, maybe any decade, you see like there's certain trends and those are the trends that everybody, because all the fifties movies, they all have like, that's, you know, the Elvis hair and, and, and uh, if it's the eighties, it's kind of a lot of the guys have long hair. Uh, even though some people, even in the 80s, they were already starting to cut their hair short. And then when it got to the 90s, it was either mullets or short hair. And then yeah. I guess in some respects nowadays, there's a lot of the short on the side and long on the top. But uh, that's kind of a popular trend right now. But uh, uh, I think that there's kind of, we're allowed to be who we are now. We can kind of, we don't have to dress up a certain way. 
Yeah, and I like that. I like it. And I like the fact that you can, I mean, music is so diverse that people can find something to listen to. Yeah. And that's it is it is easier to find music nowadays because if you like one band, it's kind of easier to find it. If you have uh, any type of streaming service, you can kind of look for something that's similar. Like there's a lot of recommendations just just from the app. You don't have to talk to people anymore. (laughs) You can just have the app tell you what to listen to. And it, it's often, it often recommends things that I like. I mean, I'm willing to admit that. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I spend most of my teens talking to other people about what music they were listening to. And, and if they like this, what else do you like? But uh, now I can actually just put on maybe a playlist or something and I might find something that I've never heard before. That sounds pretty cool. And that's... Yeah. You know, that's kind of origin. That's that's what's happening now. So that's cool. Yeah. So I have a question for you. So if you had an opportunity to play with anybody, like just, you know, do a you know some kind of collaboration with anybody, died or alive, like who would you pick? I mean, you could pick more than one, but who, do you have like a dream team of who you would love to work with, and, and you know maybe just meet or collaborate on, and just maybe we just throw some ideas around. <laughs> Um, I would probably go with, um, uh, probably a guitar player. Uh, like I love David Gilmore from Pink Floyd. Uh, that would be cool. Maybe Steve I or Ingve Malmsteen. Uh, if, if, if it's somebody that, uh, a Jimi Hendrix would have been fun if, 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 if he was still alive, but, uh, that's a tricky one. Yeah. Uh, um, I was, you know, I'm a big fan of Freddie Mercury and Michael Jackson. Can't work with them, but that would have been amazing. Would have loved to hear uh, uh, their voices on something that I wrote. That mm-hmm. would have been uh, pretty spectacular. But yeah, uh, can't always get what you want. But there is a singer called Mark Martell that does sound exactly like Freddie Mercury. So maybe that's a good collaboration. Here we go. <laughs> Put that out there. You know, you never no, know. Just, hello, you know. hello, <laughs> Mark. You listening? Yeah. Yeah. Rocky. It's Rocky. Get on the train. Call me. <laughs> Call him. <laughs> Hook him up. Uh, you know, just don't forget me when you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. who started that relationship? <laughs> yeah. Right here. <laughs> right here. You heard it exclusively. <laughs> yep. No, I think it's really great because I think that sometimes, you know, we want to not only just sing something ourselves, but like you said, you want somebody else to sing your, your music. So that's a really, and that's what a true artist does. They don't, it's not like, it's you're not hoarding it you're sharing it and i think that's really important well i think sharing your music is important and that's kind of maybe that's one of my biggest goals in life is to share really all of my music even if it's the stuff that is just like guitar bass and drums or the stuff that's very complicated like you know because i've written a lot of different types of music and i just i want to share it all and i'm probably going to have a lot of different types of fans from it and they may not all agree with each other but it's, uh, I think that music is, 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 uh, it's really important to, to share. So that's like my big goal <laughs> in life. I think a lot of people, a lot of consumers are very eclectic in their, in their choices of music. I mean, I know I am. I mean, I listen to pretty much anything. So um, I think a lot more people are, you know, I know there's people who like only listen to certain things, but Right. I think there is a, I think there's a niche market for people who are very eclectic. So would enjoy every piece that you would do because there's something else they can get from it. Cause like, to me, like I said, music, it's, it speaks to me. It's like, almost like a soundtrack for my life. So exactly. depending on what's going on, you know, like me, you know, like I always joke, but it's the truth. I mean, I would, you know, I always break out in song and dance. Like I actually have people go, why yeah. aren't you on Broadway? I'm like, you know, cause it was never there, but, um, but I'm just like, I love to sing and dance. So I'll just start tap dancing or something stupid like that in the store and start singing a song. And, you know, it's just cause I just, that's what I do. But, um, you know, it's, it's a soundtrack of my life. It's like, so like, I love Christian music. I love Broadway. I love heavy metal. I love eighties pop. I love fifties music. I mean, I love it mm-hmm. all. I mean, it's just like, classical i mean soundtracks from movies i mean i don't there's nothing that i can say oh i really don't like that <laughs> right i i think that there is i mean pretty much any genre there is good music and bad music i mean yeah. it's not really oh good music has to be rock and roll that's that's mm-hmm. just not how it works and i think that there's talented people that do any type of genre and I, i've 
I have respect for, for every, everybody that's been successful at whatever it is that they do, whether it is, you know, country or, or soundtracks or rap or, or, you know, heavy metal. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter because I think that the people that do something really well, they believe in it. And when they believe in it, it has a message that is relatable to a lot of people and, uh, and it brings people together. I think that's important. Oh yeah. My son, my, uh, my youngest son, he was in a um, high school band and he was actually in a magnet mm -hmm. program that uh, they went all over the country and uh -huh. they actually won first place for the national band. So I was like a band geek for a while. I could literally go into yeah. band competition. That's fun though. But it's fun. It's, it's so much fun. You know, it's just like, you get such respect for people when they, you know, when they're doing all this, especially like young, you know, high school students and the dedication that they put in into the shows and everything. I think it's, I think it's very impressive when you think about how much work they put into it. And especially when they're young, you know, cause uh, you know, cause I grew up, my father was a uh, first violinist in the Trondheim symphony orchestra. So they're, they're a professional orchestra. Of course you expect them to do well, but when you see, you know, I don't know, 15 year olds or, or sometimes even 10 year olds doing really well at, at like playing an instrument really well. It's just, uh, I always thought that was very impressive. I always enjoyed that. Yeah. My son would go, he would leave to go to school at five in the morning and I would pick him up at 10 o'clock at night, 10, 10 30. <sighs> they, wow. they would start, they'd have practice before school. They, he'd have school they'd hit practice right after and they would practice until 10, 10 30 at night. And sometimes they, really? of course, when they had competitions, it was, it was very, yeah. It, it was, was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. Yeah. And for the first time he went and he was a freshman in high school, I remember forgetting he come home. He goes, I think I got zombie feet because it was raining <laughs> and there was like muddy and his feet were like so shriveled because his shoes are wow. soaking wet. And then he's marched and marched and marched and marched and marched. <laughs> Yeah, he was in percussion, and they did. Um, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a percussion, but the thing was, is that his the person was um, he did these shows that were like unbelievable. Like the one show they did was like Alice in Wonderland, and they had like he had mm. these props that would just come in and out as part of the you know, and and then they did one which was called um, it was like the um, from um, oh gosh, I can't think of the name of the movie now. The the one with the um, oh my gosh. Anyways, it's uh, one of those ones that, um, like a horror movie, and they had the bed elevated. The, the character's bed was elevated. I mean, there was like, it oh. was like, yeah, it was insane. Cinematics. Yeah, it was really, yeah. And, mm. and it's like I said, they won, they, they won. They were first place. They went around the country, but they won a lot of band competitions. So it was pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. So it was fun. That was always fun. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so we need to definitely have you on the show again and next time maybe you can just play some music for us and i'm going to link up yeah. some videos that are yours and definitely try to share let people know how cool i am like i'm a cool i call myself a glam all not a grandma i'm a glam all i'm a there cool you glam go. all you know so like i can hang out you know so you know <laughs> i'll be your 80s groupie girl <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah so you know it's just been such a pleasure you just your breath of fresh air i love your music i love your vibe and um i'm just i can only see great things happening for you because you just really are a natural talent you know um musically as well as just a good person i can see that and and that and oh, that goes a long way thank you. you know it goes a far way you know and that's what's cool because it's like you know people can be like really talented but not being a humanitarian not being a caring person but you're True. that you are not like that you are the opposite you are truly a genuine person and i love that thank, thank you appreciate that and and thank you for having me this was uh, this was a lot of fun uh, definitely come back again definitely tell other people you know anybody else wants to come on my show say hey it's kind of fun so uh <laughs> where can we find you rocky uh you can go to rockykramer.com that's an easy one. There's links there to my Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, it's usually Rocky Kramer on all social media except Facebook, which is Rocky Kramer official. Official. I, I think I liked your page now because I usually what I do with my my guests is if I can, you know, I try to like be Facebook friends with you so that I can kind of like keep promoting things. So you know, but I did I did like your official page. So 
you know, it's all awesome. good. Thank you. Yeah. So thank <laughs> you so much. And check this guy out. He is amazing. He's uh, now he's got his hair is straight today, but like a lot of his videos, he's got it. Like, you know, I was thinking I was going to have him. Yeah. This is my everyday look. <laughs> <laughs> I even Casual. <laughs> Casual ladies. <laughs> Casual ladies. I love it. I love it. So, <laughs> it's been so much fun. So check him out, rockykramer.com. Go to his YouTube channel. He's got amazing, amazing videos. I recommend all of them, but my favorite was, I definitely have to say, the show must go on. You did an mm. awesome job um, Thank you. singing that song and playing all the instruments. It was, it blew me away. So thank you so much. And as always, stay real and God bless.